Hey guys, we are in the basement and today we're gonna do part number 14 of the journey restoration. That is right, part number 14. Can you believe it? And in this video, guys, we're gonna cover my least favorite topic in the whole world, and that is bondoing and sanding. That's right, in this video, we're gonna be prepping the cabinet for priming and painting. And you know what? It's not gonna be fun. It really isn't, but we gotta do this stuff, and there's a lot of useful information in this video because we're gonna cover a lot, and not just bondoing and sanding, because we're gonna be grinding leg levelers off. We're gonna be plugging holes. We're gonna be doing so much stuff in this video, but it's all so necessary. We have to do this stuff because before we can paint and prime, we have to prep this cabinet, and we're gonna be doing all of that in this video. So anyway, why don't we go to the garage and let's get to work on the journey because my God, I need to get that game down here. So anyway, all right, let's go to the garage. All right, guys, here's where the journey is. And, and first things first, you guys are gonna notice some additional games in the garage here. Um, we'll be talking about these in upcoming videos. Um, I, Cause I know you're wondering, hey, where did that Hogan's Alley come from? And what's with the Pac-Man? Uh, um, in, the, in the next few videos after the journey, we'll be talking about these games. I wanted to get the journey video out first. So I'm kind of releasing the videos out of order, but uh, I know that I owe you guys a journey video, so that's what we're gonna do this week. But anyway, here is the journey. Now, in the last video, we stripped and cleaned this game. Um, it is very clean right now. And uh, so we're ready to start restoring this cabinet. And you can see down here, it actually is very clean. And uh, I sanitized this thing, and so we're ready now to restore this cabinet. Um, the first thing that we're gonna do uh, today is we're gonna address the front, okay? We've got these holes here that we have to plug up with some dowels, and we're gonna bondo over this. Um, but the first thing I wanna do though, I wanna get that black paint off, because these sides here have the original navy blue kind of almost Formica E vinyl on here, and I wanna, I don't wanna paint uh, when, I'm when I'm doing the navy blue, I don't want to paint over black because I want the color to be consistent and I don't want the black to influence our navy blue. So I, I, I think the best course of action here is to get that black paint off and at the same time we want to get uh, this glue off right here because someone glued a piece of plexi down here, which is wrong because originally it had a kick plate um, that was stapled or, or nailed with like uh, you know, like a, a with an air gun, you know, to the bottom here. So we're I want to get all this adhesive off. It looks like liquid nail, and I'm hoping the citrus strip does remove that, and then also does remove this black paint because somebody painted the front black. I don't know why, but they did. So what I'm going to do right now is I want to put the game on its back, and we're going to kind of just go to town here. We're going to use some citrus strip, and uh, and hopefully it removes all that stuff. So let's let's let me let me put the game on its back real quick. Okay, we have the cabinet on its back here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda paint this with citrus strip, and citrus strip is a kind of, um, this is not super aggressive, okay? And I, I kinda wanna use this instead of that, that really aggressive spray that we used on the, uh, on the control panel for, uh, God, what was that? Oh, for Dragon's Lair? Um, because the original blue finish here, I kinda wanna preserve it because I want, when I'm painting the sides, I want to kind of paint the same surface on the front here so they match. And I don't want to eat up too much of the blue. And I think this stuff will just attack the black. I don't know, I'm, I'm just being a little cautious. Um, I'm hoping that this sister strip does remove this adhesive that's on here. If not, we're gonna have to take my sander to all of this. But uh, I mean, basically we're just gonna just gob this stuff on here. I hope I have enough. <sighs> And I'm just taking one of these cheap uh, paint brushes. And we're just gonna literally just paint this whole cabinet with the citrus strip and just let it sit, maybe for about a half hour or so. I hope I have enough citrus strip here. Kinda getting it everywhere, but whatever. Arr. Yeah, 
I'm just gonna kind of paint this whole thing, cover every inch of this with the citrus strip. And I really hope this gets this black paint off. So here we are, we're back in the garage working on the journey. Did you ever think we'd come out here again? <laughs> it's been a long time since we've been out here. It feels like like six months. Uh, we are gonna finish this journey. I, I think in this video, by the way, the citrus strip is eating this paintbrush up. That's not good. I like using these cheap paintbrushes because they're they're pretty much disposable, so. Ah, uh, man. Boy, that thing really ate through that brush. Uh, just kind of come in here. Just make sure every inch of it has some sister strip on it. Don't really want to strip this, but whatever. All right, I think that's pretty good. So we'll just kind of let this sit, eh, maybe a half hour, I don't know. Okay, all right, I'm gonna throw this paintbrush out here. I really hope it eats up that adhesive. All right, let me throw this out and we'll be right back. Okay, so while this is kind of just doing its thing, eating up the paint, why don't we come over here and let's take a look at our parts. Now, if you remember in the last video, we had the tumbler going. And I actually had the tumbler going for about uh, almost three days. Actually, I was in the hospital and the tumbler was still going when I fainted. <laughs> And my wife's like, uh, John, uh, there's something in the garage making all kinds of noise. Is, is, is that something you want on? <laughs> so uh, I told her to turn it off, to unplug it. So, all right, so let's take a look at what's going on in here. And you can see, I don't recall if these were rusted or not, but these look like almost brand new. So I think the tumbler was going for about three days. Now this part was absolutely rusted when we put it in there, so that looks really good. So we're gonna paint that. Um, turn the light back on here. That looks good. That looks like brand new. I think that was all rusted. I think what we're gonna do is, so let's go to the garbage can. I'm just gonna dump all of this uh, walnut shells into my strainer, and then we'll, it'll just catch all the parts. Okay, this is definitely the best way to, to get all the little pieces out of here. Just kind of strain them in the garbage can. And I don't, yeah, I know I could probably reuse this media, but it's so cheap. I mean, that, that bag was like $10, and it's probably gonna last me two years. All right, so let's just go ahead. All right, man, all these parts look like they're brand new. Eh, a couple of the screws still have some rust on it. <laughs> is it rust or is it the media? Overall, though, that stuff looks pretty good. So what I want to do, though, is pull out the parts. <laughs> some of this stuff has the media stuck in the little uh, Phillips... Uh, cross whatever you want to call it we got a couple screws here that want to fall out so what I want to do now is just pull out all the screws that are gonna get painted black but some of these have the media in them I'm gonna to have to kind of go get a toothpick and clean those out But I think I should paint, eh, this is kind of like that gun blue. I don't think those should be painted. These ones should definitely be painted though. And it looks like they were painted originally. These are the black bolts that hold the coin bucket on. And these are shown, you can see these on the front of the cabinet. So we want these to look really nice. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna get set up to paint these. Uh, like all these ones that should have black heads. Um, I, I don't think I'm gonna paint these. These are kind of that gun blue, because that looks good. That actually looks legit, so 
Yeah, tumbling is definitely the way to go with all these little screws. A few of them, though, could have stayed in there a little bit longer. But, uh, God, those are kind of junked up. So, all right, let me get set up and let's paint these. As I'm going through here, uh, getting these black screws ready for painting, I'm, I'm actually sticking them in a Capri Sun box, just poking holes in, and then we'll paint them on here. But a lot of these have the, uh, the walnut shells kind of uh, stuck in them, and I was cleaning them out with a, uh, with, a, with a toothpick, and it was kind of a slow process, so I thought, well, what if I just kind of burn the walnut out? So I just kind of took my lighter and just kind of heat it up the material that's stuck in the little groove and then like just like go like that and it just falls right out after you heat it up look at that it's totally clean that's a pro tip right there <laughs> yeah it's all out pretty good huh so I'm going to go ahead here and just clean all these threads out because a lot of them have the walnut shells kind of stuck in the uh, Phillips groove or the security groove on, a, on the screws. I guess this is one of the downfalls of using the tumbler is that that, that fine media just kind of gets stuck in everything. So you have to clean it out. That's pretty clean, but let's just keep going. Perfect. All right, I'm going to keep going, cleaning the rest of these screws out, and then we'll paint them. Okay, I have all of my screws that need to be painted black in this little Capri Sun box, and I'm going to hit them with Rust-Oleum Universal Advanced Formula Satin Paint and Primer in one. This is my go-to paint now. I, I love this stuff. Um, really good quality paint. I always get great results with it. So let's just go ahead and just hit this with a coat, and I'll probably come back and we'll probably give it two, three coats. All right, so let's let that just dry, and then I'll come back later and hit it again. Okay, so I think uh, I think we're about ready to kind of see what's going on over here. Um, I've had this the citrus strip on here, I think, for about 20 minutes or so. Um, of course, I didn't time it, but uh, what I want to do now is just kind of come in with a plastic scraper. Um, just got this at Ace Hardware, you know, cheapo plastic scraper, um, and let's just see how what kind of happens. Oh yeah. All right, no problem. This is gonna come right off. Eh, it's leaving some of it on there. So I'm just gonna kind of pile it up because this is a mess. But yeah, that sister strip's definitely doing the trick here. Black paint's coming right off. How about the adhesive? Oh yeah. So yeah, it ate right through that liquid nail or whatever they use to hold that kick plate on. Good. So let's just clean this all up. It's totally nasty, but... I'm almost wondering if I want to put it on again because it's leaving some remnants of the black. We'll really find out once I get it all cleaned up. Yeah, the adhesive is really on there. What would we do without our chemicals? <laughs> I wonder why they painted the front of this black. You know, it always baffles my mind. You know, like these random, like like the Miss Pac-Man I have over there, which you haven't really seen, but uh, the two sides of it are painted black, but the front is not. Why? It's I don't get it. Same thing with this game. They painted the front of this game black. Why? It doesn't make any sense. Why would you paint the front of this black? 
I mean, I know they converted it to a golf game, fine, but is there some rule that says a golf game can't be navy blue? I just, uh, and if you're gonna paint the front black, why not paint the sides black? I'm glad they didn't, but what were they thinking? Like, did they think, oh, well, it's a golf game, uh, so the front needs to be black, and we can, uh, we can leave the sides navy blue. It just, the kind of, I just don't get some of the stuff that went on back then. I just don't. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. All right, let me get some paper towels here and see if we can kind of sop up this grossness. And this is gross. I mean, look at that stuff. Blech. But yeah, it's totally taking the black paint off. It's leaving some of it behind. I might want to do this one more time. We'll see. But I want to just kind of sop up this stuff and put it in a bag. Uh. This is really nasty. The nice thing about Citrus Strip, though, it's it's pretty safe. Um, it doesn't like eat up your hands if you touch it. You know, like that other stuff that we used on the Dragon's Lair control panel overlay. I mean, that stuff was like acid. I mean, it, it, it was every time I got it on my hand, it was burning. Um, this stuff, not the case. But it, it is messy. I'm wondering if I want to put this on one more time. Because it's, there's, actually it is all coming off if I rub. So, alright, let me, uh, I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to get, I'm going to clean this all up. And then we'll come right back. Okay, I kind of wiped all of it off with paper towel only, and, and uh, it actually did a really good job. And I'm just going to come in now with some simple green and just see if I can clean it up even further. But that stuff totally did the trick, guys. It removed the adhesive and the paint, and really the blue vinyl underneath was perfect. Um, it's too bad the blue vinyl has all these holes in it, you know, from the lock bars. And I mean, it would have been nice to, to save this and keep it original with the original uh, blue, but uh, it, it's just not going to happen because it's, it's, it's really not, it's far from perfect. Um, and any little black remnants here, I can just pretty much just get off with my fingernail. Yeah, that citrus strip's good. It, it, it doesn't seem like it harmed uh, the original finish at all, too. If anything, it looks like it, it kind of uh, was preserved under the paint because it has a nice kind of gloss to it. Got some simple, um, some of that stuff in these holes. Gotta clean this out because we're gonna be gluing into this area. All right, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna let this dry. Um, let's let the simple green dry and then we'll come back. While I'm waiting for the cabinet to dry, I wanted to kind of address the leg levelers because uh, these things are actually in bad shape. Uh, they're really rusted. And I tried getting them off with my channel locks and they wouldn't budge. Um, I mean, they're on here and I have to replace these. And I'd like to, to sand these plates down. I tried getting the plates off too and the, the whole thing is just completely rusted on there. So I think I'm gonna spray some liquid wrench on it um, and just kind of let it sit on there for, you know, 10 minutes or something. Maybe that'll help. Um, Cause I have to replace these leg levelers cause they're, they're actually, in really bad shape. They're, they're pretty much missing. It's just the posts. Um, I don't like the fact that they look the way they do too. They're really rusted. Uh, the plates are rusted. I'm going to try to sand them without removing them just to kind of clean them up. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's a part of the cabinet that no one's ever going to see like ever, ever, ever. Um, I just don't like though how they look. It looks really bad. This these cab this cabinet must have been sitting in water or something. Um because it just doesn't look good. So we'll spray it, let it sit. Maybe that'll penetrate the rust and we can get those off. So alright, I'll be right back. Okay, uh we need to address the holes. Uh there are two holes here. One here 
and one on the other side right there. There's actually two holes over there. And these holes were from the lock bar. Uh, originally, the operator put a lock bar across the coin door so that no one, could, no one could steal his money, okay? So the coin door was here. He had a bar, a steel bar that went across that was attached here and here with a padlock. And, and so I removed that hardware and I'm, now I'm left with these holes. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna eventually bondo this, but we can't just put bondo over this hole because we need to fill in this giant hole that goes all the way through the cabinet. The Bondo it cannot fill that, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill it with a doll. We're gonna glue a doll in here. And I went to Home Depot and I got a couple different diameter dolls. And this one right here is perfect. So we're gonna cut this down and glue it in. Do it on both sides, right here too. And then this one has a second hole and we're gonna fill that with these little dolls right here, just like so but we're gonna have to glue it in. So I need to cut this down to size. So this cabinet is about three quarters of an inch. So I wanna cut the dowel uh, just a hair over that cause we'll sand it flush. Um, I should get my tape measure. Yeah, let me grab my tape measure and let's mark this off. All right, so I, I did measure the cabinet and it's uh, a little over three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna come in here and we're just gonna mark this uh, about seven eighths right there. And I'm gonna make two seven eight inch plugs essentially. So let's come down here with my chop saw. And you could do this, do this with a hand saw or, or hack saw, any kind of saw. It doesn't really have to be this fancy thing. I got this a long time ago when I built my deck at my old house. All right, it flew across the room. So let's cut the next one. Yeah, I'm just gonna come in here. We don't have to be precise, but it should be, I would, I say a little bit thicker than the cabinet, so. I'm going for around seven eighths of an inch. <clears throat> Alright. So let me grab the other one. Okay, so all I'm gonna do basically is just glue these guys into place, okay? And I'm using premium wood glue. Any wood glue will work. I just got this at Ace. It was what they had. They had all kinds of different brands, but uh, so I'm just gonna put glue all over this little doll, this little plug, and put some in here. And I'm just gonna plug it up. And I'm not really worried about it. I'm going to plug it so it's flush with the back, and it is a little bit taller on this end, but that's okay. We're going to sand this flush later, and come over here and do the other side, same way. And, yeah, I'm being kind of messy, whatever. It's kind of making it flush with the back of the cabinet using my hand. And we'll do the same thing with this one. Ugh. All right. All right, so we're going to let that dry, and then we'll be right back. I'm actually gonna let it dry. They, it says uh, to wait over, to, to dr let it dry for 24 hours before like putting stress on it. And I think I'm gonna do that. So we're gonna come back tomorrow and resume. So I'm gonna let it dry overnight. Let me show you guys something here. Um, I quickly took my channel locks trying to get the leg leveler off of here and it just broke off. The whole thing just broke off and now I'm left with a peg Oh, I got to figure out a way to get these plates off. These screws are so rusted. I put my screwdriver on them. I cannot get it off. I tried kind of prying this off, you know, but it really wants to take the whole piece of wood with it. I, it just feels really risky. I'm wondering if I can ground the screw heads down that are holding this and uh, then maybe it'll just fall off. Um, yeah, I got to figure out a way to get these off. We're going to have to replace these plates. I mean, they're disgusting anyway, 
and I just I need to get them I need to get these screw heads just kind of grind this down I think and then the whole plate should just fall off oh what a mess so all right anyway we'll be back I'm gonna let those uh, dolls dry Okay, it's the next day here, and I was looking at the glue, and it's actually not dry yet, so we're going to kind of move on to some other stuff. I don't want to work on this until it's dry, because we're going to be sanding this and bondoing it, and I don't want to be sanding wet glue, um, but it's, it's definitely in there good. It's just not dry. So I want to talk about these leg levelers again. I actually got one of them off, one of the leg leveler plates, and they are just rusted on beyond belief. And uh, I was trying to figure out a way to get these off. And I don't want to save them. I don't care about them. They're just toasted. And we want to just put something newer and cleaner on there. And I kind of figured out a way to get them off, kind of a brute force way, um, but it works. So I went to the hardware store and I bought the cheapest grinder I could buy. And I've never owned a grinder. And I thought, well, hey, why don't we just grind off the heads of those rusted screws and that thing should just fall right off. So I went to the hardware store. This was 40 bucks, cheapest one they sell. You know, I'm probably gonna use it one time, maybe once a year if I'm lucky. So um, I do recommend using safety glasses when you're doing this because it's gonna be, there's gonna be a big spark show here, guys. <laughs> this is, this is uh, some serious crap. <laughs> be careful with this tool man it, it, i think it could ruin your day but um, i'm wearing safety goggles uh safety glasses and i'm going to go ahead here and i'm just going to grind off the heads and by the way here's the grinder um it comes with this grinding wheel uh again this is just cheapo stuff but uh and you can mount the handle on the left or the right or in the center i mounted it on the left and i'm just going to come in and just grind off the heads on the plate and then I think we should be able to get it off. Well, I know that because I already got one of them off. So I'll do this one with you guys. You can kind of see how to do it, but uh, this is definitely a, a brute force way. I, I tried prying this off with a screwdriver and it was just kind of stressing this whole piece of wood. It, it really was making me nervous because the entire piece of wood wanted to come with it and I just didn't like that and I, I cannot get these screws off. This thing is so rusted. Um, you know, I tried getting the leg leveler off with my channel locks and it just literally, it just snapped right off. So it, it is a hot mess. So we're going to come here with the grinder and we're going to grind these heads off. So, all right, let's do it. And make sure that you have no, nothing flammable in the area because this is going to be a spark show. Um, it, this sparks like crazy. Actually, I need to plug it in. Okay, I grinded all the heads down um, and off. What'd you guys think of that? Was that pretty epic or what? <laughs> That's definitely a manly tool, man. But I basically ground all the heads of the screws that were holding that plate on flush. And now I'm gonna come in here with my little uh, putty knife and see if we can just pop this thing off. And on the other one, I had to go back and, and uh, uh, grind a little bit more, so we'll see what happens if, if it doesn't come free. There we go. It's starting to pop off. Just kind of, kind of. Yeah, I can see right here. I got to grind that a little bit more. Let me kind of come in and. Remember, put your safety goggles on, man. This this is uh, serious stuff. There's metal and sparks flying everywhere. I mean, if you really wanted to get crazy, you could put a welding mask on if you're really scared, because it is a lot of sparks and just you got to make sure that there's no nothing flammable in the area. You don't have like a can of gasoline near you when you're doing this. 
Um, because the Spark Show is unbelievable. All right, it looks like these two right here are still kind of stuck on. And yes, I've never used a grinder before. Did I do it right? <laughs> I mean, this stuff is a hot mess of rust. There we go. All right, and it's off. Just make sure it's not hot when you touch it. Okay, so there we go. So now we could try to get the old uh, screws out with my channel locks or just pound them in. Um, I'm going to be putting a, a new type of uh, plate on here. Um, you can go online and, and probably find the same exact ones, but I usually use these little cheapo guys from Ace. I'll show you in a second, but uh, we'll see if we can get these old screws out, and we can. If you can't, you can just pound them in, but this is, man, this is ugly, man. I should pound that flush or what and then I'm just gonna come in with my sander and just kind of clean this up because it looks really ugly right now You gotta ha have leg levelers, guys, because if you don't, this cabinet will just be on the ground. You'll destroy it. It's not going to harm anything. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grind off the other three. And uh, really just the same way. So I've got two of them off now. And I'm going to go ahead and just grind the bottom ones off and I'll be right back. Fun stuff, right? Okay, I got all four of the leg leveler plates off and I sanded it down just to kind of clean it up because it was really pretty ugly. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to install a new, uh, I guess we'll call this a flange or uh, whatever you want to call it, a leg leveler holder. Uh, these are obviously very different than the originals. I use these all the time. They have an Ace Hardware. They're cheap. They're easy for me to get. I know there's other stuff out there. I could probably find the same plates, but I've used these a million times. They actually work really well. Um, yes, they're nowhere near as heavy duty as the originals. I mean, these things were, were kind of overkill, um, but these really do work and they're cheap and they're easy for me to get. Ace Hardware has them. You could find them in the little bins. Um, you know, with all the pieces and the parts. And I'm, I'm just gonna come in here and just kind of throw three screws in these. Um, and you know, this is a part of the cabinet that no one really sees. And I'm not moving the game around a lot, so these are fine. Leave me, I, I know you guys are gonna make comments about this. <laughs> they actually work well. And I'm just gonna come in here and just with some little wood screws, just kind of hold these in place. And you know, the weight of the cabinet really does all the work here if I can get this thing started there we go and we're just gonna throw three screws in here yep 
Yes, I know. It's not as sexy as the original, is it? But you're never going to see it. Just like so. And then I got some just El Cheapo leg levelers. I actually like these the best. I I've purchased some of those. There's a couple different ones out there with, with nylon bases uh, that allow the game to slide easy. But be forewarned, there are some cheap ones out there, and I've, I've fallen for those a couple times on eBay. And uh, nine times out of ten, you'll move the game and the, the piece of vinyl just like falls off. And then you end up with just this little post here, like digging in your carpet. So I'm going to have the nut here up about, eh, about an inch. I'm going to come in here and actually level them all off so they're the same. And uh, actually, you guys can't see what I'm doing. So there's a little nut on here, and I just kind of eyeball them so they're all about the same height. I want the game about an inch off the ground. And just like so. All right, so we've got one on, and I'm gonna go ahead now and do the rest of them. And uh, that's gonna work just great. And now we can stand the cabinet up and we're not on the wood, we're on the leg level. So I'm gonna go ahead now and do the other three exactly the same as I did that one. Okay, I have the uh, the new leg levelers on here, and I think it looks pretty good. Um, one thing I noticed is that this piece, this bottom side of the cabinet is kind of splitting and not making me happy. So it's like the T-molding grooves here, but you could see this is kind of loose, like it's starting to split in half. Uh, I think I'm going to throw some wood glue down here just to see if I can kind of stiffen this up uh, so it's not so loose. I don't think that it's 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 a problem where the cabinet's gonna fall apart. I just don't like it though, because it's it shouldn't be like that. If you look down here, it doesn't separate at all. But down here. So I think I'm gonna put some wood glue in here and just kind of clamp this down and just let it dry. And I'm not worried if I get too much wood glue in here where it causes a problem with the T-molding groove. I can just come in with my router and cut a new T-molding groove. But I'm just going to kind of go crazy and just put all kinds of glue in here and try to clamp it down. And see if we can kind of... Ah, oh, man, this is all dried up already. Hang on. All right, I'm just gonna come in here and just squeeze some glue. Ah, it's all dried up. You know, I have the worst luck with this damn wood glue bottles all drying up on me. Oh, there we go. So hopefully this stuff will just get down in there. trying to carefully pull this apart to get the wood glue in but I don't want to make it worse really the problems over here this parts okay just kind of get it to fall inside You know, these particle board cabinets are so cheap. This is like MDF. I mean, it's like freaking heavy duty cardboard, you know? I just, I like plywood cabinets so much more than this stuff. This stuff just didn't hold up. And if, if there's any kind of moisture, forget about it, man. I could tell that this cabinet, the bottom half here is a little suspect, you know, like it might have got wet. 
or it was just like in a, a damp environment. I mean, it's solid. I don't feel like it's a cabinet that's falling apart, but it's just not perfect down here in the bottom. All right. Just kind of going nuts here with the glue. All right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna clamp it up here, not down here, because I don't want to close up the, uh, the T-molding groove completely. There, that's pretty good. So we're gonna let this sit for about a half hour so the glue can set. Hopefully that will stay on there. I should come in here and wipe off the excess glue too. Let me get a paper towel. There's no sense in leaving a bigger mess than we need on here. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry. Uh, about an hour or so, and then we'll be back. Okay, it's been a couple hours, and it's still drying. I'm just going to let it go a little bit longer. Um, but I, I think it's going to be really good here. I, I stuck this uh, plastic scraper in there, too, to kind of push the bottom over, and I think it's, it's really going to be good when we're done. And I'm going to probably use my router to cut a new T-molding groove after it dries. We might do the same thing on this side here, because this is a little stretchy on the bottom. Not as bad as the other side, but I, I think I should do the same thing on this side. I'll, I'll put some glue in between and then clamp it down and let it dry overnight. Um, okay, so right now while that's drying, I think I want to address some of these rusty parts. Um, we've got these things here. This is for to mount the control panel. Uh, these go left and right on the inside, and the control panel sits on these. And you can see they're really rusted. And uh, so I'm just going to take my uh, my sander here, and we're just going to kind of go to town on these. I think I'm going to hit these with some clear coat. To know you, the less I understand a fascinating side effect of plans. The temptation to call you, I will be overcome. I've been down that road and I've never won. Okay, we're all sanded. It actually was kind of a pain in the butt, but I got pretty much all of the rust off of here. I think it looks pretty good overall. Definitely better than it was. And what I'm going to do so it doesn't rust again, I'm going to hit it with this clear, this uh, satin clear, uh, it's Krylon crystal clear. Um, I think this, this should work just fine. Um, I don't want to paint this stuff because it was originally this metal color. So I'm just going to hit it with this clear and just to kind of seal it up. Boy, this stuff is, this is an old can. It's, it's spraying all over the place. All right, we'll just let that dry and then I'll do the other side. So, okay, I want to, uh, I want to sand and paint the speaker grills. These guys right here, um, cause these are all rusted. So I'm gonna sand these down, then we're gonna hit, them, hit it with some black spray paint. Um, so let me grab my sander and we'll sand these guys down.
all sanded there. Um, it's actually a lot of work. Um, I'm gonna come in now and just clean these guys up with some simple green um, before we paint them. Just because we have all this like paint residue. And I just would like to get as much of the sanded paint off of here. And you know you can see these these speaker grills, so we want these to look really good. Um, I actually thought this was aluminum, so I'm surprised to see it rusted. I guess it's not aluminum. There's a little bit of rust on here that's in these little crevices. I think we'll be okay. Um, I mean, short of sandblasting this stuff, it's really tough to get all that rust off um, using a palm sander and even the piece of sandpaper by hand. So I just, I got 98% of it off. Um, some of it is just in really deep little crevices. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna let this stuff just kind of dry and then we'll come back and hit it with some paint. Okay, let's paint this stuff. I'm gonna paint the backside first. Um, I usually do that because if you turn it over and it sticks to the paper, I'd rather have the backside stick to the paper than the front. Um, so let me get some paint here. We're gonna use my favorite paint, which is this uh, Rust-Oleum Universal Satin Paint and Primer in One. This this stuff's dynamite. You can get this at Home Depot. And we'll just put a uh, two to three light coats on each side. But if you put this stuff on right, take your time. It, 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 like, it almost looks like it's powder coated when you're done. It's pretty unbelievable. This is great paint. And I've tried like all the different brands and, and I believe this to be the best paint that's out there. All right, so let's just kind of come in here and hit this. And let me shake it up a little more. I don't like how it's coming out. All right, well, we'll call that the first coat, and I'll let it sit, and I'll come back and probably about... Uh, Oh, 20 minutes or so, 15 minutes, and put a second coat on. I think it says on the can to put the second coat on within an hour. Uh, painting, recoat. Uh, dries the touch in 30 minutes to an hour. Apply a second coat within one hour. So I'll probably come back in about a half hour and give it a second coat. Okay, while the paint's drying over there on the uh, speaker grills, I'm going to pull this off because this has been on here for a couple hours. And uh, I want to do the other side here. So let's just pull these clamps off and pull that out. And that looks real good there. And we'll just let that dry overnight. I'm not going to do anything with this until that's fully dried. Um, but I want to do like the same deal over here. I'm going to put some glue on this edge because I, I measured it. This is supposed to be like three quarter inch wood and it's, it is like a full almost eighth inch too much too thick down here um, just from swelling and I think so if we just kind of glue this and clamp it down and I cut a new groove I'll have kind of uniform thickness of the wood all the way up um, and I think this will also help with the T molding I just think this is all stretched out and this is nowhere near as bad as the other side but it's still a little loose so I'm just going to come in here with some glue and just kind of Trying to get that in the crevice. Get it to fall down in there. And gravity should do its job. Just kind of get that stuff to go down.
Okay. Trying to get it to go down. gonna let it sit on here for like a minute it'll all start dripping down in there getting into the crevice I mean we're gonna be sanding all this so I'm not too worried about how ugly it looks right now. And I'm gonna come in here with my clamp. So, you can kinda of see what's going on. Just kinda of clamping it down. All right, I'm gonna let that sit probably overnight, honestly. I'll, I'm gonna let both of these sit overnight and then we'll come back tomorrow. And then we'll get to work on Bondo and sanding. Okay guys, it's the next day here and I had these clamps on here all night. Uh, and let's see how it turned out. And I think it turned out pretty great actually. So this is nice and compressed now. It's kind of a uniform thickness. Uh, top to bottom because before it, it's like some moisture got down there and it just kind of expanded the ends of this wood and and now it's nice and uniform um, let's take off the other side too right here I actually went and got some more clamps because I wanted to have both sides clamped overnight so I got some cheapo ones so yeah that looks great dude that was a total success because before I was able to just basically just stretch this wood out. It was so like saturated uh, from humidity, water, who knows what, but it definitely was, the wood was definitely thicker on the bottom than it was up here. And now we have a nice uniform thickness all the way down. But because we did glue this, we're gonna have to cut a new T-molding groove um, because we kind of glued it up. And uh, not a big deal uh, if you have the right tool. Um, I actually have my router right here. This is a just a cheapo Craftsman router. And what we're gonna do is just cut a T-molding groove real quick. And I'm using this bit right here. Um, <clears throat> I got this on Amazon. It's a slotting cutter with quarter inch arbor. Uh, it's 9 16 of an inch deep. And it looks like uh, 1 16 inch thick. And I got this this is basically, I, I guess you can use this with uh, three-quarter inch uh, stock uh, because the bearing here is set up for that. And, and how this works is this is going to ride. What I did was I adjusted, I had this loose and I put the bit on. And right now it's riding nicely in the existing T-molding. And then when we come to the new stuff, it'll just keep going and we'll get the same groove. And basically what I did is I loosened this up. I put the bit in and then I came on like this and I got it lined up and then I tightened it down like so. And uh, it's actually pretty slick. So why don't we go ahead. I'm going to put safety goggles on because I'm doing it kind of sideways. And uh, just be safe when you do this stuff. Let me grab my goggles. Okay, I got my safety glasses. I'm going to put these on. And uh, you probably should do this with the wood facing down because uh, the bit's like right here in my face. But just be careful. Um, all right, here we go. Huh, I don't like how I did that. I think that's kind of crappy, actually. If you guys can see, it's like I kind of lost center when I got towards the end. And it's like it's really fat down here. 
Uh, I might fill this up with some Bondo and we're going to recut it again. Yeah, I, I, I screwed that up. I really did. <laughs> That's okay. I could fix it. What we'll do is I'll fill this with some Bondo and then we'll cut it again. Because I don't like... It's like I kind of came off center. I wasn't putting enough force on the wood when I was doing it. I really should do this with the cabinet laying down. You know what? That's probably the right way to do it. So, yes, John makes mistakes. <laughs> uh, that's crappy. All right, let's do this side. I'm wondering if I should turn the cabinet on its side and do it the right way. I hope you guys are learning from me. <laughs> I'm going to turn the, the cabinet on its side. Okay, I have the cabinet on its side, okay, and we're going to do it the right way now. <laughs> Don't do it the way I just did it. Th that's, not, that's not a good way, as I found out. I was trying to be lazy and not put the cabinet on its side. You know what? Oh, well. All right, look, where's my goggles? Uh, let's put my sunglasses on. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> Dead nuts in the center. That's the way to do it. So I showed you guys the wrong way the first time. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going to leave that in too. I don't care. <laughs> you guys are going to learn from my mistakes. <sighs> you know, it's funny. I, I've had this router for, I don't know, 12 years. I bought this a long time ago. I've used it probably three times in my life. And one time was to, um, one time was when we did the, the uh, Pac-Man cabaret and we cut uh, a T-molding groove. That was the last time I've used this router. All right. So that's pretty good. So we're gonna have to fix what, what I screwed up on the other side, but uh, let's take a look here. That's nice and centered. You can see here's the original groove, and right there, and it continues dead nuts center right through our repair with the glue. And now we have a nice fresh groove down here. The thickness of the wood is correct. Um, around the corner here, we got a little it kind of walked a little bit, but it's going to be okay. And then we come in over here on the other side. So, all right. Why don't we turn the cabinet on its back here now, and, and we're ready to start bondoing and, and sanding and stuff. So let's do that real quick. Okay, I have the cabinet back on its back here. So I want to start sanding down. Actually, I already did this one. We're going to sand down the dowels and make them flush. Now, if you remember, there was a... There was a lock uh, bar holes here and I filled that in with a dowel I glued it in and then I just took my sanding block here with 100 grit sandpaper and I just kind of smoothed that dowel flush with the cabinet and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here now this one had two holes so I've got two different dowels and uh, one of them is sticking up kind of high but it's a thin one and I'm just going to kind of come in here and just cut it down a little bit just so I don't have to sand too much down <sighs> yeah, that should be okay and I want to come in here with my sander and just kind of hit the high point I don't want to go nuts and remove this vinyl because I want to paint on this vinyl I don't want to paint on the raw particle board so we got to be really careful when we're sanding here that we don't remove too much of this um, because if you paint directly on the particle board, it's going to look like shit. So I just want to come in here and just get the high spot down as far as I can without hitting, with hitting as little vinyl as possible. And we're just going to keep sanding this down until we get it flush.
Man, I can't believe I screwed up that team molding groove like that. That was stupid. That's all right. I, I'm confident we can fix it with the Bondo. And it'll also be a good lesson to show you guys how to address team molding slots that are just blown out. Um... Because you could Bondo, fill them in with Bondo, and then go back in with the uh, T-molding bit with your router and recut the, uh, and recut that. <sighs> man, it's hot out here today, man. So I've been working on this game since Friday. It's Monday. And this is how far I got. A lot of waiting for stuff to dry and uh, all right, we're getting there I just don't want to go crazy and hit the vinyl and I think using a hand sander is the way to go here Because if I use my palm sander, it would just destroy this, this vinyl, and I don't want to do that. So I'm just trying to shave, sand the dowels so that they're flush with the cabinet. Getting there. I think that's pretty good. Okay, we're flush. So, I've got that flush, and this other side here is flush. So now we could start filling that in with Bondo. Um, and we're gonna start Bondoing in all the little imperfections all over this cabinet. Okay, so what we're gonna use is Automotive Bondo, and it's a body filler, and I love this stuff. It, it hardens really quick. Um, it's relatively easy to work with. Um, you can buy this at Home Depot. Um, pretty much every hardware store sells this. Now, you don't have to just go to an automotive place. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix you got to kind of work fast because this stuff hardens really quick. And so you don't want to make too big of a batch. Um, and let's read the instructions here. Uh, clean surface with warm soapy water or a residue remover, remover allowed to dry. Sand the damaged area with coarse 80 grit sandpaper to remove all the paint, primer, and rust down to bare metal. Blah, blah, blah. Sand to one, one to two inches beyond the damaged area. Uh, mixing. Need cream hardener tube thoroughly okay so we're gonna need that and then it says uh, for a golf ball size amount of filler squeeze out a inch and a quarter inch strip of hardener or mix a three inch diameter circle half inch thick of filler to a three blub all right so for a golf ball we're gonna squeeze out a quarter inch and a quarter inch strip so let's come in here and just about that much and let's go ahead and pour a golf ball sized amount of this in here that's about right okay so this stuff will not start to harden until you mix up the uh, the hardener with it the red stuff and the objective here is to to make this like a pink salmon, uh, salmon color. So we're just gonna mix it. I just cut down a dowel rod to use as a 
mixer. Put a little bit more hardener in there. It's not very red. <clears throat> okay, so now let me get my plastic putty knife. Alright, I can't find my plastic one. I'm just going to use the metal one here. And I'm going to come in here. And we're just going to fill this in. I want to go beyond the uh, area and we're going to sand it smooth. I don't like how that's sticking up there. Something tells me I didn't sand that flush all the way. We might have to sand and repeat this. So let's come over here and do this one. Might take a couple applications to get this right. Oh man, I can't wait to see the comments about this. <laughs> I know you guys very well. <laughs> uh, I'm a brave man showing, uh, showing my work. This is like seeing sausage being made. All right, I'm gonna let that harden and then we're gonna come back and sand it and then probably do a second coat on this stuff. Um, Cause I could tell right now it's not gonna fill it all in with one coat. All right, we'll let that go. I want to come over here, and there's a bunch of damaged areas. Let's see if I can do this quick enough. Like this here, I don't like that. Let's kind of sand that flush. Right here. It's gonna come in with a little bit of this. And this stuff's starting to harden already. I'm gonna have to make another batch. All right, I'm gonna let that dry on top there. I'm gonna make some more. Okay, while that stuff's drying, it, it, it says to wait about 20 to 30 minutes before you like sand it. So I'm gonna let that stuff go. Um, I wanna start addressing down here. I've got all kinds of little pock marks. Um, the bottom of the this, this corner is not very good. I, I came in here with my sander and just kind of sanded everything down smooth. Now this corner right here, this edge, will be hidden by the kick plate but I still wanna just kinda of square it off and it'll also be good practice because we're gonna be doing the same thing on the sides and it will be visible. And how we're gonna do this is I, I went and got a piece of plexi and we're gonna screw it to the bottom here to kinda of use this as a guide, okay? So we're gonna put our Bondo on the bottom of the cabinet up against this piece of plexi and the bondo won't stick to the plexi and this will help us get a nice sharp corner down there um, I just went to the hardware store and asked them for a piece of uh, scrap uh, plexi so I'm gonna come in and just drill some pilot holes and I'm gonna screw this thing down make sense and I just want to make sure that it's above the leg levelers here So if I do this right, this thing will not crack. Put one there. One there. And I think I'll we'll put one down in here. Yeah, let me get some wood screws. Oh, 
hope my pilot holes are big enough. I mean, if this thing cracks, it's, I don't really care. I mean, it's just a piece of scrap plexi. I, think, I don't even think the guy in the harbor store charged me for it. There we go. Okay, so that'll be a nice guide then for when we're uh, putting the Bondo along that edge. And this will be good practice because if I screw this up, it's okay because you're not going to be able to see it, but this will be a good experiment. All right, so I'm going to mix some more Bondo together and we'll start filling in these other areas. I really wish it wasn't so hot out here. I hate doing this kind of work, guys. You know, I, I fully admit that I am not a master of this kind of work. I, I think that I, I can do it. I think sometimes I need to redo my work sometimes, and I'm okay with that. I mean, don't be afraid to redo your work. Um, and that's kind of the lesson I learned. You know, it, it you, you'll get into a situation that you feel like you can't get out of, but you usually can. Um, and so I'm still learning how to do this stuff, you know. I'm definitely, I think, better at, at, you know, soldering and figuring that kind of stuff out than this type of work, but I always seem to get through this. And like I said, just don't be afraid to redo your work. You don't have to live with it. And you're gonna make mistakes. I make mistakes constantly. And uh, who cares? <laughs> it's your game. Just do it right. All right. Okay, so let's uh, get this out of here. Okay, so basically I wanna just fill in some of this other stuff like that. I don't know how well this is gonna work because that's such a minor imperfection, but I'm gonna try anyway. So we'll just kind of go like that. And then we'll sand that down later. Um, this, I didn't really like how that looked. I mean, that gets covered up by the bolts, but still, I don't really like how it looks. So where else? And then let's let's work. Let's get some practice on the edge down here. And we're just using that plexi as a guide. And hopefully we'll get a nice square edge. And this entire area that I'm working on right now gets covered by that kick plate. So it's not super critical, but like I, I want to actually practice using this this plexi method. I actually stole this from Fett, Sean on my podcast. He uses plexi on the edges because I asked him one time, I'm like, well, what's how, what do you what do you use? You use some kind of guide or a piece of wood? And he said, oh no, plexi, because the uh, the bondo doesn't stick to it. I'm like ah, I like that. You gotta work fast, man, because this stuff hardens. Just trying to get it in here. And yeah, it looks ugly right now, but after we sand this stuff down, it's gonna look fine. Probably putting too much on, but I'm gonna sand it all down. I 
I want to get in here and get all that raw. I don't want any raw uh, particle board. I don't know if I'm going to get lucky though. Okay. All right, I'm going to let this all dry now for a half hour, and then we'll come back and sand all this down. And I'm just trying to get all the, the naked particle board covered with the Bondo. And yeah, that looks pretty ugly and graphic, but I'm telling you, after we sand it down, it's going to look pro. Don't worry. All right, I'll come back in a half hour. Okay, it's been about a half hour. I'm going to pull this plexi off. And let's see what we have here. We're going to do some sanding. Boy, that worked pretty awesome, man. Holy cow, that was awesome. Okay, well the plexi is obviously the way to go there because we got some pretty sharp corners here. Now I need to sand all this down. So I'm going to keep sanding here. I'm just going to just sand, sand, sand until this is all flush. I'm thinking about getting my uh, electric sander out now. Yeah, I'm going to grab my electric sander. One second. Okay, I came back in here and I'm putting a second application on those bolt holes because the first time didn't fill it in all the way. And also on the corners down here, um, I lost a little bit of the Bondo when I popped the uh, Plexi off, so I went ahead and put some more in those areas. But overall, I think we're getting somewhere and I'm just kinda, I'm gonna let it dry again for a half hour and then come back and sand it again. Um, actually, I probably should fill that T-molding gro groove in too right now. Uh, maybe we'll do that after this. I'm gonna let this dry and we'll be back. Okay, I have everything all sanded and cleaned up here, and I actually feel pretty good about the way this looks and feels. If I take my hand, I don't feel anything. It's all smooth. There's no like transitions, there's no bumps, and that's what you want. So, 
I feel really good about the Bondo I did here. I mean, it was ugly at first, but it, you know, you just keep sanding, sanding, sanding till it's smooth and just, just get rid of all the excess. And I think it looks pretty damn good. I am thinking though, we are gonna prime this. I wasn't gonna prime the cabinet. I'm gonna go get some primer when we're ready to paint. I think I, I would feel a lot better if I just primed the whole cabinet over all the Bondo. That way when we put on our navy blue paint, we're gonna be putting it on a consistent surface that's you know just all white. Um, I did also fill in the T-molding groove over here where I screwed up, and we're gonna cut that right now. Um, I basically just took my little uh, uh, scraper and uh, my little putty knife and just filled this groove in completely with, team, with, the, with the Bondo, and now we're gonna cut a new groove. So if you ever get a cabinet where the T-molding the groove is just blown out, you can do this. Just fill it in with Bondo and then cut a new groove and it's just like brand new. So this is, look how sharp this is, the bottom edge. Really turned out great. I had a little bit of a mishap here where it kind of chipped, you see that? I, I, I should have re redid it, but I'm not going to because again, this is gonna be covered up with the kick plate, but we're gonna try to do as good a job as this on these long sides because this is all chewed up all the way down there. Um, so okay, I'm gonna put the cabinet on its uh, on its side, and we're gonna start addressing this bottom edge with Bondo, and then also cut the T molding groove. <sighs> I, I have to tell you, I'm sick of this already. <laughs> I hate I hate doing this work. I hate the Bondo work. I hate it. Hate it. Hate it. It's just it's nerve wracking. It really is. But you just gotta do it, man. You just gotta. You gotta just take the leap of faith, put it on there. It looks horrible and ugly while you're doing it, but you can just sand your way out of it. And uh, this is all really smooth. I mean, you can't even tell the difference from one surface to the next, other than a textural difference. Um, there's no bumps, it's all smooth. So I feel pretty good here. So all right, let's put the cabinet on its side. We're getting somewhere. I went through and sanded down all the little high spots. There was a lot of these little like hickey things that were kind of everywhere. And I sanded those down, uh, exposing some of the wood. We're gonna have to just throw a little Bondo on that and just hope we can really smooth that out. I am a little worried about all of the edges. Uh, I don't really think I'm gonna be Bondoing every single edge on this. Um, the worst part, actually now that I've sanded this, this actually looks pretty good down here. Um, it's actually pretty straight. It's not that bad, actually. Uh, I'm wondering if I should bondo this. I think I should. Because what I don't want is the paint directly on this MDF. It's gonna look like crap. And if I put the bondo on here and I smooth it out, you won't notice uh, that the vinyl was missing on this edge here. Um, we might be able to get away with it, but it's not gonna be a really perfect job. Um, but I really don't want to Bondo every single edge on this thing. Um, I'm gonna do the bottom and we're gonna touch up over here, this little dimple here, cause there's like actual wood missing. And we're gonna try to smooth out all these little dimples here. So uh, let me get my piece of plexi and we're gonna screw that to the bottom here, just like we did the front. Okay, I mixed up another batch of Bondo here and I'm just gonna go to town on this. Um, going as fast as I can and before this stuff sets. Um, oh, we got a lot to do still. <laughs> this, is, this is not going to end. I'm 
just trying to get it in here. I think the best way to do it is like this. Kind of pushing it into the low spot up against the plexi. Hurry, John. <laughs> Starting to harden. Okay, we're going to have to just let that dry. I think we did pretty good actually. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and we'll come back. Okay, I actually went to town on this thing off camera and uh, sorry, I was just getting sick of it guys. <laughs> I just wanna be done with this. And uh, I'm waiting for it to dry right now and this is a big job, you know, it really is. And uh, I already sanded down here. This looks actually pretty decent. Um, I decided to kind of freestyle it over here on the back. And I think this is going to turn out pretty decent when I uh, sand it. So I'm going to wait for this to dry and then we'll sand it and then we're pretty much done. Um, I'm noticing, I keep noticing little things though, like this. Uh, I got to come back and throw some on here. I've mixed this stuff, like, just look all, look all around here. This stuff is getting hard so fast. It is so hot today. I'm sweating like a pig out here. It's like 90 degrees right now, and it's like 8 o'clock at night. And uh, the stuff is just setting so fast, like within a minute. So I, I've had to just keep mixing and mixing over and over again. I'm actually blowing through this stuff. I almost went through a whole can, and I haven't even done the other side yet. Um, so I'm going to let this dry, and then I'm going to sand it. And then uh, we might be done for today. It's eight o'clock right now. I'm not up for the uh, the other side right now. I'm kind of I'm kind of tired of this topic right now. <laughs> I know I'm not trying to sound like a baby or a prima donna, but uh, this was a lot of work, man. Trust me, and it's it's stressful too because you don't want to screw it up. You know, I don't want to screw it up, especially I I, I, I got to do this right. You know, I've gone so far with this game, we can't just, you know, cut corners now. So, I'm kind of being a little anal and scrutinizing every little detail. But uh, I think in the end, it's going to be worth it. Because if I do all this prep work right, um, when we paint this thing, it's going to look perfect. I mean, yeah, right now, it looks hideous. But, uh, all right, I'm going to let this dry, and we'll be right back.
Okay guys, uh, that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, I actually, I ran out of sandpaper. I'm done. The day is over, man. It's, it's about nine o'clock here, Monday night, and I am done. I've been out here for about eight hours today, and I've got, well, I, I'm about halfway done, really. I mean, I got the fronts done. I'm very happy with the front. I got nice square corners on the bottom down there, uh, edges. Uh, the sides, the bottom is done. I have nice straight edge all the way across. However, I ran out of sandpaper, so I can't finish sanding uh, all this Bondo down. So I'm gonna have to go to the hardware store tomorrow and get some uh, sandpaper. Um, but I've got the Bondo on this side and I just need to finish sanding it. And then this side is done. And then I'm gonna do the other side exactly the same as we did these sides. I'm, I'll do it on my time. Um, we're gonna do this side here. And in the next video when we come back, the cabinet's going to be done. All the bondo's going to be done, and we're going to be ready to, to prime and paint this thing and hopefully put the side art on and, and then put the whole game together. So we might be one more, maybe two more videos till we're done. But what do you think? Oh, so much work. <laughs> I mean, you, you hear about FizzGig uh, building reproduction cabinets instead of going through this. I can kind of relate to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea, you know, just get a new cabinet and throw this piece of crap out. But, uh, you know, this is really a good cabinet overall. I mean, this is a solid, clean cabinet. The bottom, a little chewed up because the leg levelers were missing or whatever. Um, but uh, when we're done, it's going to be great, you know. But it's just so much work. And and this prep work, this bondo work, if we do this right, and we, uh, we have so far, if we do this right, when we paint this thing, this thing's going to look beautiful. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. So it's really worth it to do all this prep work, even though it is a ton of work. And, and right now, it just it looks ugly. But, uh, yeah, I ran out of sandpaper. Ugh. The Bondo can says you should use 80 grit to knock it down to get the big chunks off and then go over it with 140 to feather it. And I'm also going to pick up some primer too tomorrow at the hardware store because we're going to prime this guy. But uh, I'm going to finish the Bondoing and sanding. It's pretty much everything you guys have seen just over and over and over again. Um, take your time, you know, and just keep sanding it until you can't feel that Bondo. You know, like down here. It's perfect, man. You cannot feel that. And look at this sharp edge, man. I I'm pretty proud of that. And even back here, we filled this in. And this is nice and sharp. So, overall, I'm pretty happy how this is going. It's just a lot of work. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, did you have fun? What'd you think? A lot of work, right? But <laughs> so worth it. <laughs> so, all right, guys, let's go back down to the basement. We're, get, we're getting there. We're, we're, we're getting somewhere. All right, let's go. All right, guys, there you have it. That was part number 14 of the Journey Restoration. What'd you think? That was a lot of work. I am not kidding. That was a ton of work. Guys, I started working on the game this weekend on Friday because I had a four-day weekend, right? So I started filming on Friday and I finished Monday night. That's how long it took me to do all that work and I'm still not done. Yes, I'm gonna finish it off camera, but really it's it's pretty much all of the same stuff over and over again that, that I showed you guys in this video. So I'll be doing that off camera this week and then when we come back, we're gonna start painting and priming the cabinet. And then I don't know if we're gonna finish the game in the next video, it might be another video after that because after we paint and prime, we gotta put the side art on, we gotta put the kick plate on, we gotta reassemble the game. It's gonna be a lot of work. I mean, there's still a lot of work ahead of us, but we really accomplished a lot in this video, so I hope you guys did enjoy that. So anyway, hey, if you've never subscribed to my channel, now is a good time to do so because I do release new videos on Sundays and sometimes in between. So if you wanna keep up with these videos, and there's a lot of different things that we cover in these videos. It's not just restores. We do road trips, we do warehouse raids, we visit friends arcades, we fix things, we break things, we do all kinds of stuff in these videos. So if you wanna keep up with these videos, you have to subscribe. So go ahead, click subscribe. 
And then also, I have two podcasts. One is called Video Game Outsiders. The other is, is called Arcade Outsiders. Their websites are videogameoutsiders.com and arcadeoutsiders.com. I do both of those podcasts live every Tuesday starting at 9 p.m. Eastern on allgames.com. So if you want to listen live, go to allgames.com on Tuesdays starting at 9 p.m. Eastern. Now, if you can't listen live, don't worry. Go to iTunes or Stitcher and search for Video Game Outsiders or, Ar or Arcade Outsiders. So, all right, guys, I think that's it. I'm exhausted. I, I really am. Uh, it's late Monday here, and, and I'm, I'm ready for bed. So I'm going to bounce this video and upload it, and we'll see you guys real soon. I actually have some really great videos coming up after this one. Because if you guys remember, there was a pack, there was a Miss Pac-Man in the garage, and there was a Hogan's Alley. I'm going to show you guys where those came from in the upcoming videos, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Really cool stuff. So, all right, guys, that's it. I am done. I will see you next time. Oh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked it. Later, and bye. <laughs>